Today on Investigate TV Plus, undetermined is a cause of death that for some leaves more questions than answers and could leave a killer on the streets. I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm G. Chappelle, one woman's years long fight to change the course of her brother's case. I made a promise to my, my brother at the funeral home and I made a promise to my family that I wasn't going to stop. He deserves his justice. Our investigation reveals the costly effect on communities. Plus, rivers and lakes contaminated with chemicals. What's happening here is happening all throughout the, the country. Not doing anything, ignoring it, is not going to help. How researchers are fishing for answers to understand the impacts on our health. What do we say? Ready! Go ahead, tell it to the sale. Nice job. And when they say all aboard, they mean it. Lake Pontchartrain is obviously an asset that belongs to all New Orleanians. A program looks to open the waters for all and increase access for those previously unable to set sail. In-depth stories that inform and inspire. You're watching Investigate TV+. Undetermined, that's how thousands of deaths across the U.S. are labeled every year because investigators can't definitively say how the person died. Some of those undetermined deaths are actually homicides. That was the case in Georgia where a family spent years fighting in the pursuit of justice. Now a suspect is charged with their loved one's murder. While the case is now under a gag order, reporter Kristen Crowley interviewed the victim's family and a private investigator before the judge made that decision. She spoke with them about their fight to correct a critical mistake. It's 2016. Uh, we got a guy shot himself. Okay, what did he shoot himself with? A shotgun. The man calling 911 says DJ Ficky took his own life. How old is he? I tried to get the gun. I tried to get the gun. And it went off. And he had it in his mouth. A medical examiner at the Georgia Bureau of Investigations ruled DJ Ficky's death a suicide. And when you and your family heard that, what was your reaction? No way. Amanda Shirley is DJ's sister. He was a good person. He had a big heart. He loved everybody. He'd never met a stranger. She worried about her brother like most big sisters do. DJ was a prankster, she says, and sometimes got into trouble. But one thing she says he was not was suicidal. She was convinced someone else was to blame for her brother's death. When she brought her concerns to authorities... I think they just assumed I was some stupid, uneducated person that didn't know what I was talking about. Just couldn't accept the fact that, you know, my brother was gone. Months later, she turned to private investigator Eric Eccles for help in reopening DJ's case. Eccles listened to these 911 calls. Where's the damage done to his head? It's right in his mouth. Went over dozens of crime scene photos and the autopsy and says he knew investigators got it wrong. They said DJ committed suicide by shooting himself on the left side of his face here in a downward angle with a shotgun. That was just unheard of. And after years of pushing from the family and Eccles, a medical examiner from the state of Georgia changed DJ's manner of death. The GBI told Investigate TV Plus when additional information was brought to the Emmy's office, a medical examiner updated the manner of death to undetermined. Not what the family had hoped for. Having that label of undetermined, did it feel frustrating? It did. Families want answers. They should, I mean, they've already lost a loved one. They shouldn't have to have all these questions because undetermined is just wide open. Undetermined. Coroners and medical examiners use that term when there is not enough evidence to point to an accident, natural cause, suicide, or homicide. In some cases, it's necessary. But in DJ Ficky's case, Eccles says it was clearly a homicide. And there was more than just physical evidence to prove it. I'm having a hard time understanding how you're talking about he was holding the gun. As part of the initial investigation, police questioned this man, Marshal Mark Payne, who was there at the time of the shooting and said it was a suicide. I, went, I gotta hold the gun. I grabbed the gun like this. 
and I'm pulling, and he's trying to put it back to his face like that, and I'm pulling away. Police also interviewed DJ's wife, who witnessed the shooting, but had a very different story. That's intentional when you put a gun in full expect to pull a trigger. That's intentional. You saw Mark shooting, correct? Not satisfied with the ruling of undetermined, Eccles used these videos to pressure authorities to take a closer look. Amanda started a change.org petition that got 60,000 signatures. You had to keep fighting. You had to keep fighting. They won that fight in 2020 when DJ's manner of death was changed to homicide. The investigation was back open, and three years later, Marshal Mark Payne, the man who made this 911 call, we got a guy shot himself. was arrested for murder. It was it was a victory. It was huge. Seven years, seven years is a long time. And that's all I did for seven years. Woke up every day, and that was my determination, was to get this, you know, get my brother's killer held accountable for his murder. But how did such a mistake happen in the first place? Eccles says it began before an autopsy was even done. Sheriff's records show an investigator noted, quote, I have no indication that this incident is anything other than a suicide. The scene had not yet been cleared. It's not always uh, solved at the autopsy table. Um, it really depends upon the circumstances. Dr. James Gill is Connecticut's chief medical examiner. He says an autopsy can't tell who pulled the trigger in a shooting, and the investigation done before a body reaches a morgue is key. What kind of impact can this have on a community of getting the manner of death incorrect? If it's a homicide and you're not and you're missing a homicide, then obviously someone is, is out there who could do it again. Determining how someone died is up to either a coroner or medical examiner, depending on where you live. The CDC estimates as many as 30% of death certificates, while not necessarily inaccurate, have issues with completeness. Amanda and Eccles say if families believe there was a mistake, it's up to them to fight. To fight a state? That's what we did. We fought a state. GBI is the state agency. We fought a county, we fought police departments. We did not give up. I made a promise to my, my brother at the funeral home and I made a promise to my family that I wasn't gonna stop. He deserves his justice, he deserves his truth and he's not here to fight for it, so somebody has to. As we mentioned at the start of this report, we interviewed the family and private investigator one week before the judge issued a gag order telling them and any other investigators or witnesses not to talk about this case. Payne has pleaded not guilty to the charges against him. Still ahead, home buying headaches, how you can be your own investigator to ensure your next house is your dream home. Plus, a dangerous chemical found in rivers and lakes across the country. This is a significant problem, and this is one that we think should be addressed at both the local and federal level. Researchers uncover how the toxin is affecting the food we eat. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime online. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Investigate TV. You can catch stories and full episodes. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, nearly half of the nation's drinking water has detectable levels of PFAS. The EPA says PFAS are long-lasting chemicals that were used in manufacturing a number of household products like cleaning solution, water-resistant fabrics, and non-stick cookware. Investigative reporter Andy Parati went out with a group looking to see how much PFAS are found in freshwater fish, a concern for both wildlife and people. Damon Mullis cruises on a South Georgia river in search of fish deep below. Probably 20, 25 foot in some areas would be the deepest. About 25 miles from the coast on the Ogeechee River in Savannah, passing sunbathing reptiles, waterfowl, and swamplands along the way. What kind of fish are we looking for? Uh, red breast sunfish is what we're targeting. And it doesn't take long. Oh. Got you got one. one. Got for us to make our first catch. That's what we're looking for, red breast. 
The plan isn't to eat the fish, but to test them for a cancer-causing toxin called perfluoroalkyl, or PFAS for short, used by manufacturers for decades to make products water and oil resistant, like nonstick cookware, carpet, and food packaging. Scientists call it the forever chemical because it does not break down naturally. Last year, a study by the Waterkeeper Alliance discovered the chemical in the Ogeechee River and other rivers in Georgia, including the Chattahoochee. The Ogeechee is the site of the largest fish kill in the state's history, caused by water discharges from a now closed textile plant upstream. So, you know, we put these chemicals out in the environment, uh, not really understanding their impacts on on the ecology of our systems, but also their impact on human health. And then once they're out there, they make their ways into our body, whether we eat fish or not. There we go. To measure the impact, the executive director of the Ogeechee River Keepers partnered with Georgia Southern University to test the fish for PFAS here at its lab. Each one caught, measured, weighed, and its GPS location recorded. The bigger the fish, the better for testing. So the longer an animal's live, the higher up on the food chain, generally uh, the more contaminated they're gonna be with uh, PFAS. It's not just the Ogeechee River potentially contaminated. A study released by the Environmental Working Group earlier this year discovered elevated levels of the chemical in fish from coast to coast. The samples collected by the Environmental Protection Agency discovered PFAS in freshwater fish 280 times higher than commercially raised fish. To put in perspective, the Environmental Working Group estimates eating just one freshwater fish a year could be equal to drinking a month's worth of water laced with the forever chemical. David Andrews is one of the researchers who led this study. This is a significant problem, and this is one that we think should be addressed at both the local and federal level in terms of holding polluters accountable and potentially um, providing guidance to anglers or communities who are, re are relying on these fish. Oh, that's a good one too. Some states have set PFAS limits related to fish consumption, issuing warning signs like these, but Georgia is not one of them. Why? The state's Environmental Protection Division says the states that took action had much higher levels of the toxin, and it's decided to wait until the Environmental Protection Agency releases its PFAS restrictions and testing guidelines. A decision with no set deadline involving an agency with the history of delays. I would love to see a little more urgency from the federal government and the state government. And that's one reason we're doing this project. What's happening here is happening all throughout the, the country. Not doing anything, ignoring it, is not gonna help. Our investigation into PFAS and its impact on our health and the environment continues with a mom forced to drive 20 minutes just for clean drinking water. We don't know the complete like scope of how this will affect our bodies, how it will affect our babies. I just want to know. I just want to know, like, is there as much cause for concern as what is being presented? We have her story, and we travel to a town already implementing a solution that could hold the answers for other communities. Head to InvestigateTV.com and search for PFOS to watch all of our coverage. Still ahead, setting sail for success. Do north. Keep that red line in the middle as close to zero as you can. How this program is steering teens toward a potential career path. It, it does feel like it's therapeutic but also the potential job opportunities that we're informed of are going to be very useful. Plus, there's no place like home unless you're overpaying for it. The easy way you can be your own investigator to save money on your next house. Our in-depth coverage continues. You can get connected to Investigate TV Plus on all social media platforms. Own 
Owning a home, a slice of the American dream, and for many, it's staying that way, just a dream. According to the National Association of Realtors, in June of 2023, 75% of homes on the market are too expensive for a household income of $75,000. There's no way to predict the housing market's next move, but you want to be prepared when you're ready to buy. Reporter Josie Sturman shows us how you can be your own investigator to make sure you're getting the best deal on your next home. Investigative reporters use public records every single day, but did you know they're also useful when you're buying a house? In this Be Your Own Investigator, we're gonna show you how to find out everything you need to know. Real estate websites can tell you a lot about when a home was last sold, but so can property tax records. Many counties have these records posted online and you can search by address. This will tell you when a house was sold and who owns it now, and if there are any tax problems that could come up at closing. Nobody wants that. These records also have the parcel number. That's really important. It'll help you check to make sure all of the improvements done on your home were done legally. And you can also take a peek at your neighbors and make sure you're not moving in next to an eyesore. You can use these records to check out the neighborhood and see what other properties are worth, at least in the eyes of the government. You know, you've been wondering about the price on the house down the street with that weird addition on it, so go ahead, check it out. Now keep in mind, not all counties will have these records online, but you can usually get them in person from your county clerk or the Register of Deeds. But if you go in person to visit, you're likely going to have to shell out some cash for copies. With this Be Your Own Investigator, I'm Josie Sturman. Still ahead on Investigate TV Plus, you can't control the wind. Go ahead, start cranking. Nope. Sorry, go ahead. Your arms, I know you can do it. But you can adjust your sail. I learned a lot of new things when I come out here, and I feel like he's giving me another opportunity. How this program is opening up access to the sport and potential career paths. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime streaming online. Get the app for Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. They're free to download. Here's a look over Lake Pontchartrain near New Orleans, Louisiana. The lake is home to the longest continuous bridge over water. The Lake Pontchartrain Causeway is 24 miles long. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, the bridge is so long that when driving, you can't see any land in any direction for a span of eight miles. A new program on Lake Pontchartrain hopes to change perceptions and make sailing more accessible to everyone. Reporter Rob Masson shows us how. It's Wednesday evening at West End. Go ahead, start cranking. No. Nope. Sorry, go ahead. Your arms, I know you can do it. Dozens of big sailboats crewed by boat owners and friends getting off work head out on the water to enjoy a midweek race. So let's do another tack, are you ready? The smell of the brackish air and the sight of a full sail is usually an experience enjoyed by a relatively small group of enthusiasts. But now the joy of sailing in New Orleans is more attainable than ever. And Lake Pontchartrain is obviously an asset that belongs to all New Orleanians. After Katrina, Southern Yacht Club member John Menard set out to fulfill a dream. Hundreds of cities across the country had a community program to make sailing available to everyone. But in spite of being surrounded by water, New Orleans had none. He wanted every New Orleanian to have access, um, just like he did as a member of Southern Yacht Club. Menard put together a board, reached out to a number of foundations, and was able to found the Community Sailing Program, taking advantage of new floating docks created after Katrina destroyed Municipal Yacht Harbor. It's really a great example of building back better. Community Sailing set up a number of courses to help everyone from the disabled to students from public and private schools all across the city. We just get to relax and we also, you know, it's competitive, so it's a learning experience. Like I learn a lot of new things when I come out here and I feel like he's giving me another opportunity. Warren Easton Jr. Cy Smith has to juggle academics and athletics to squeeze in his weekly sail. Do you see the faded red and white line? Yeah. You could be a medic on the water. You could do a lot of things. It doesn't, doesn't just have to be a captain. The students learn a variety of skills, everything from how to design, build, and sell boats to 
navigation skills which often cross into science and technology fields. Professionals come out and talk to the students, riverboat captains, um, maritime lawyers, marine biologists, etc. come out and talk to the students about what they do and how they got involved. Participation grows. It tripled from 425 people in 2021 to 1,300 last year. That's and good. it's expected to double again by the end of 2023. All right, pull in. Yep. Students not only learn the basics of sailing. Where we bear away from the wind, we have another reach, your beam reach. But they also learn about careers in the maritime industry, which can be lucrative. In Southeast Louisiana, one in every five jobs is associated with water. Our fee for service include like adult learn to sail, women in the wind. Families can also learn sailing and have access to the fleet of Independence 20s sailing sloops to use at their leisure. What do we say? Ready! Go ahead, tell it to the sail. Nice job. Students find sailing helps all aspects of their yeah, regular right. coursework. It, it does feel like it's therapeutic, but also the potential job opportunities that we're informed of are going to be very useful. Many have never been on the water and find sailing peaceful, quiet, and often competitive. It's just you and your own thoughts. Like, things are simple. You're not worried about school. You're not worried about work. You're not worried about what you got on going on at home. You, it's just you're out there, you're sailing with your buddies. And there's room for more. We would love to have kids from every corner of New Orleans, every neighborhood. Kids who now have unprecedented access. You see that? Keep us on zero. To a variety of sailboats. Do north. Keep that red line in the middle as close to zero as you can. In a program that not only allows them to enjoy a sunset on the lake, but also teaches them teamwork. That's going to help Cy and Noah and helps them master skills that can last a lifetime both on and off the water. And like he said, being on the water shouldn't be for just a select few, but for everyone. But I really liked when they were in the classroom learning the specific skills that it takes to sail. Yeah, because there are so many careers too on the water and they're learning all of that in that program. And look how much the program has grown. It's great, it's that's great. really nice. All right, that's it for us here on Investigate TV Plus. I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm T. Chappelle. Thanks for watching. Coming up on the next Investigate TV Plus, doctors forced to navigate red tape while patients say their care is being compromised. She suffered for no reason. We take an in-depth look at prior authorizations on Investigate TV Plus.